In the Episcopal tradition, morning prayer is a standard liturgy from which we draw these elements, a scripture verse, the confession, and the gloria. How, however, we then pivot to a reading or poem written by another author followed by a reflection prompt and a short silence to contemplate the message God might be speaking to us as individuals. We end with the Lord's Prayer. From the Book of Common Prayer, pages 76, 79, and 80. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. That's the first book of John, verses 8 through 9. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life, amen. Glory to God, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Consolations, the solace, nourishment, and underlying meaning of everyday words by David White pages 63 through 67. Giving is a difficult and almost contemplative art form that can only be done well through practice. To learn to give is almost always the simple, sometimes heartbreaking act of just giving again. To stop, to stop giving in any relationship and re, in, in any relational situation is to call an end to that particular form of togetherness. Giving may be the essence of existence and a test of our character. It asks deep questions about our relationship to others, to ourselves, and strangely to time itself. All gifts change with the maturation of their recipients. To give well appropriately and often is to establish a beautiful seasonal symmetry between the urgency within us that urges us to be generous and the part of the world that is suddenly surprised and happy to receive. Giving is not done easily. Giving is difficult. Giving is, in fact, a discipline that must be practiced and observed over years to be done properly. The, apprentice, the apprenticeship to the art often involves giving the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time and learning how to do the opposite through time and trial. It means getting beyond the boundaries of our own needs. It means understanding another and another's life. Most importantly, it acknowledges implicitly that we ourselves must be recipients of things we cannot often identify or even find ourselves. 
Giving means paying attention and creating imaginative contact with the one to whom we are giving. It is a form of attention itself, a way of acknowledging and giving thanks for lives that are other than our own. Clichés are clichés, often because they are so stubbornly true. It is the thought that counts, but even more it is the imagination behind the thought that counts, made tangible through gifts that find their definition through being twice blessed. Reflection. Consider how the act of giving, when approached as an art form and practiced with intention and imagination, not only nourishes relationships, but also serves as a reflection of our character and relationship to time itself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.